The Sword of Death By Yagyu Munenori The old warrior said, Weapons are a necessary evil, and heaven detests them. Use them only when there is no other possibility. It is the nature of heaven to give life and nourishment to all things, and any weapon used to kill, whether it is a sword, bow, or naginata, is in direct conflict with the will of heaven. Since these are used to kill heaven's beloved children, heaven hates them. We must also consider that weapons are instruments of heaven's wrath and judgment. In the natural cycle of things, spring winds bring life and greenery to the earth, but the winter frost destroys the life that the spring brings. Heaven's love and judgment follow this same path. It makes sense to put a stop to evil because human beings will take advantage of an opportunity to commit evil, and once that evil is revealed, it must be judged. For this purpose, weapons are also approved by heaven. A single tyrant may kill or torture thousands of innocent people. If you can save the thousands from death or torture, is it not best to kill that one man? In this way, the sword of death is also the sword of life. It takes an expert to properly handle a weapon, and if you are not well versed, there is a good chance that you will be killed yourself while trying to strike down another. After careful study, you will come to realize that in almost all battles or duels of one against one with swords, one combatant will die and only one will live. This is strategy on the smallest scale, and the repercussions, in the grand scheme of things, is very small. However, if that one man is a commander, his warriors represent his arms, legs, and fists. Now, if this single man wins or loses, it affects the whole of the state as well as all of his warriors. This is strategy on a much larger scale. If the commander's arms and legs work in a coordinated effort, which is to say if his warriors work well together, he will win. If not, he will lose. This is the same for individual combat. When two warriors cross swords, the one with the best coordination and focus will win. The same is true of the commander, who must coordinate his troops and resources in a focused effort. Victory and defeat are decided on the field of battle, against opposing forces, set to destroy each other. The victor, will be the commander who can play out the various scenarios in his mind, and determine the best course for his army. This is the art of strategy. In times of peace, the art of war is also manifest by concentrating on various disturbances and heading off problems of the state before they spread and grow dangerous. The way to accomplish this, is to appoint the right leader for villages, towns, and provinces. A leader who seeks personal gain at the expense of the population will quickly undermine the security of the state. Building a proper leadership structure is the foundation of the art of war, and the first line of defense for the state. Self-interested magistrates are enemies of the peace. Take the lessons of the sword into consideration where one must know not only what an opponent is doing, but what he is about to do. The lessons of sword combat can indeed apply to many situations. A ruler is often surrounded by scheming manipulators who cast gracious eyes toward the Lord, but look toward his subjects with a cold stare. Such a person will only give favorable reports of you if you entice them with money or power. In this way, even great accomplishments will be presented as evil, and the good will suffer while the evil flourish. Your ability to spot this is even more vital than properly reading your opponent in a duel where your life is on the line. The state, and all the people in it, are the Lord's responsibility. Those close to him serve in the same manner as those who are distant. Proximity is irrelevant in matters of importance. Remember, the Lord's servants are the same as his arms and legs, just because the legs are farther from the head, they are no less important than the arms. Since they both operate and feel pain alike, what difference does it make which one is farther from the head? 
When those who are close to the Lord use the situation to take advantage of those who are at a greater distance, the innocents will suffer and despise the Lord. In this way, the Lord will be accused of inflicting harm upon blameless people, even though He is not responsible. Usually, there are no more than five or ten people who have access to a leader, the vast majority of His subjects are at a distance, and they will rise up if they despise the Lord. Those close to the Lord, who serve Him all along from a position of self-interest rather than for the good of the land, will be the first to turn on Him when times are difficult. These things happen because of a leader's assistance and may in no way be the fault of the leader. It is important to understand this from the beginning and make it clear that you wish to extend consideration and benefits even to those at the greatest of distance. This understanding is also part of the art of strategy. In order to engage in successful long-term relations, you must be able to apply your strategy to your companions also. If you do not, a conflict may spring up around you, because you are not aware of your surroundings. And if you remain in this situation too long, you will end up being blamed for something for which you had no part. On the other hand, if you are not fully aware of your surroundings, you will eventually speak out of place, because you haven't read the positions of others, and will end up giving your life in some useless quarrel. All of this hinges upon your ability to properly read the intentions of others and apply appropriate strategic thinking. Apply the warrior's strategic thinking to all things, even for something as basic as the placement of furniture in a room. There is only one truth in all things, it stands apart from human reason. Find the truth and stand on it, regardless of your situation. Apply this to leadership and government also. It is short-sighted to think of sword strategy as simply a means of killing. The man is irrelevant, it is the evil that must be destroyed. Proper strategy will allow thousands to live in peace due to the killing of only one evil man. The things recorded here are only for this house and should not leave. That is not to say that the information should be kept secret from the most worthy of students. If knowledge is not passed on, it is useless. Let my descendants consider this well.